Thank you so much for joining us here. Good to be here. In the here. midst of uh, your wonderful tour with Bonnie Raitt and Jackson Brown and uh, Sean Colvin and David Lindley. And David Wally. Lindley. I heard David Lindley was talking about me, man. What was he saying about me? All bad things. Yeah, I All think. Bad was things. he telling you the uh, sort of some dirt from our past? We were comparing. I was trying there. to. I was trying to dig. I was trying to dig. I think he shut up right when I got to the good stuff. So maybe you want to. Oh, I can talk about bit. it. Sure. Well, we were we were comparing notes about our sordid pasts uh, the other night in Jones Beach, and he was telling me, uh, you can tell me who tops who on this. He he was telling me how he used to play in a in a bluegrass band at Disneyland, and they had to wear sort of little matching suits, you know, that sort of thing. But I countered with my story about. Uh, the uh, the Elton John show that we put on at the Sheraton Lounge in Williamsburg, Virginia, where I was wearing hot pants oh boy. and like the and <laughs> glasses with this a bunch of stuff all over me, and a T-shirt with in glitter letters it said "I'm hot." Mm, I think you win. <laughs> I was dancing on the Fender Rhodes. <laughs> That's all, amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. What a what a noble beginning, I think. <laughs> well, you know, and there are pictures to uh, prove this. Oh. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, we'll dig them yeah. up. We'll see where those are. I've got them, <laughs> so uh, we'll see. I might let I might let them out sometime. All because I did this year, sort of go in that direction on my new record. I, I actually put the worst picture that exists of myself in the world on my album jacket. <laughs> it's my college student ID card from Berkeley oh, School of Music, sort of the quintessential music school geek picture. That's and, excellent. Uh, so if you want to, you, you can get that and you can put that on it. Right as I'm talk, talking about this, you can like put that on your piece. Oh, we'll do it. And, uh, <laughs> we will do it. It's, uh, it's worth seeing. It's, I sort of look like I just had a lobotomy in the picture. <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, let's, let's talk about real quick about this, uh, this wonderful tour. How did, how did uh, this first come about? How did you guys get the, get the idea to get together and, and hit the road? You mean you don't want to talk about my old Berkeley College of Music days? Then? Well, we'll save that for later. So for later. We'll save okay. it for later. Uh, how, do we, how do we start this? Well, Bonnie saw this picture of me, this Berkeley College of Music uh, <laughs> picture. And uh, it so endeared her to me, you know, uh, that she thought, you know, this is a guy I'd like to do a tour <laughs> with. Anybody who's got sack big enough to put this on his record, I think I'll work. I'd like to work with him. Actually, we've worked together for years. <laughs> right, right. Uh, she, uh, I played on her, uh, I believe it's Luck of the Draw record, mm -hmm. I Can't Make You Like Me is the name of the song. And uh, I played piano on that and the, the sort of the Rhodes thing. Not the Rhodes that I was seen dancing on in the Elton right, John right, show, right, but right. another Rhodes that they found <laughs> for me in the studio. Uh, and then she sang on my record, Harbor Lights, and then I was on her PBS special and her live record, Road Taste, Tested, and then she was on my PBS special. We toured together in 94. For about five months, we opened for her. So we've been doing things for years. And this is fairly obvious for anyone who's followed the careers of the various uh, principals on the tour. It's a fairly obvious bill, I would say, because Bonnie and Jackson have done things for years. Right. Jackson and I have done a couple of benefits together. Uh, Bonnie and I have done lots of things. Sean and I have done lots of things. She's been on one of my records. I was on two of hers. She was on an earlier special of mine. So there you go. I've given you almost the That's entire good. history of why we're here together. <laughs> uh, there was a gig we did in December of last year in Santa Cruz. Bonnie and Jackson and myself did a benefit for the Hurricane Mitch victims. And uh, we just had such a great time doing it, such a great time playing together. And Bonnie started calling me once a week in January to say, we need to do this for real. And so so uh, and was she that. was really the catalyst. And... Uh, uh, but they wouldn't use that picture of me on the poster. <laughs> I wanted them to put that as my promo picture, but they would not do it. I said, look, because actually you should see Bonnie's, uh, Bonnie's uh, picture from her senior year in high school that's in the freshman Harvard Facebook. Oh. Very cute. See, uh, her, Maybe her that should be her next it would, it, cover. It, you know, if, if it was, it would be very popular because <laughs> it's a very cute shot. Now, do you guys think you're going to record this tour and release it uh, as, a, as a live album, perhaps? Well, we are recording it. You are. Uh, and who knows? We'd have to see if there's anything in, in there that's... If there's enough that's special, you know, that's, u that's unique, that comes off... You know, if it feels like it's worthy of being put out, then I think we would do that. Uh, Certainly, we'll be able to because, like I say, we are recording it, and I think there, hopefully, there would be enough that's special in there, just conceptually, because I think we're really taking a lot of the songs to different places. You know, for instance, we're doing "Sunny Came Home," Sean's great uh, hit song, 
very stripped down acoustic, just a violin, accordion, mandolin, uh, almost bluegrassy uh, version of that song. So I think it's interesting when you take songs and take them out of their out of the their standard uh, production, the standard arrangement that they're known for, and reinvent them. And I think there's a lot of that going on here. And there's a lot of like interchanging of vocals as well, right? Aren't you singing on some of Jackson's songs? And I'm not sure I'm singing lead on any of Jackson's songs. I'm singing lead on some of, of uh, Bunny Raitt's tunes, and they're all singing lots of leads on mine. I guess I'm the lazy one. <laughs> but no, I just like to hear them do it. In fact, there's a song of mine called Lost Soul that Sean and I did a duet on, in, on my record in 1990, uh, Night in the Town. Well, we did a duet of the song, but it, I, really, I really wrote it as a quartet. Four different people, three different people sing about this person, the lost soul, and then he sings at the end. And uh, this is the first time I'm actually able to realize my original concept for the song because now we've got four singers. Yeah. Jackson sings the first verse. Bonnie and Sean split the long second one as it's supposed to be, as it was written, and then I sing the last verse as the guy talking. So that's fulfilling for me to actually yeah. hear the song the way I originally heard it. Yeah, that must be very yeah, exciting, actually. I, have to, I want to ask you something about the, the la your last album, Spirit Trail. Oh, okay. I, I read the somewhere. The cover. The cover. I, know, I think I heard this story about the cover, though, but I'm not sure. But that okay. wasn't the question. I'd what, what, who's on the cover? That's my oh, Uncle Charles. That's your Uncle Charles. At a that's party in about 1966, <laughs> taken by my dad. Uh, with the cigarette coming out of his ear. You loved digging up those old pictures, huh? <laughs> well, I just w was on a roll there. We found this old picture in an old box of pictures that my mom had sort of collected. And uh, originally it was just, oh, look at this. This is a scream. This is very funny. So we, we made colors, Xerox blow-ups of the picture to show at the Hornsby Christmas party that happens every year in Yorktown, oh. Virginia. Uh, which is, of course, a big hit, this picture. <laughs> and we couldn't think of a good cover. I didn't have a good idea. No one I felt was really coming up with anything, coming up with anything of any substance uh, that really meant anything. So, sort of in the absence of something that really meant something to the, the, the concept of the record, I thought, well, hell, let's just use this just on, for the total reason that it's a funny ass picture. Yeah, yeah and people loved it. Loved well, it. I mean, we loved it. Well, see, yeah. <laughs> Some people loved it, some people just couldn't believe it. It was like, they, you know, couldn't believe it was me. But the people who really know me, friends of mine saw it, like Bonnie, for instance, for example, she saw the cover and went, oh, of course, you know, <laughs> this is him. You know, That's excellent. The, the, well, real, the real Bruce. My question, though, however, yes, I read... The question was about Spirit Trail, the, the album, not the, not the cover. Right? Exactly. That I read that you, you approached that album differently. By, you said that you had recommitted yourself to the study of the piano. What Absolutely, did you, what did you yeah. mean by that? And you'll hear a bit of that tonight. Uh, there are a few moments, uh, there's a solo piano moment in the show where I play a song accompanied just by Bonnie and Sean singing backgrounds here and there. Uh, I meant, what did I mean by the recommitment to yeah. the piano? When I turned 40, which was four years ago, I decided, uh, you know, 40 can be sort of a milestone in, in your life, if you choose to let it be. Uh, and I sort of thought, okay, here I'm 40. You know, how am I going to deal with, with, with musically, with my life musically now? Uh, because a lot of my friends who are 40 and and above, just kind of relaxed, kind of just took the took the foot off the pedal a little bit, just uh, slowed down, got a lot less intense about what they do. That's been my, I've noticed that. You know, mm -hmm. whether they're still out there making records or playing and singing and, you know, or uh, writing, recording, touring, they're not pushing it, you know, trying to push to a new level mm -hmm. uh, in any real meaningful sense to me. I, 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 and, and they would tell me that. It's not just my observation. So I thought, well, what am, what am I going to do? Am I going to do this and just kind of groove? Uh, or am I going to sort of take it to a new place? There were always doors of piano playing, sort of different areas of, 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 of the pursuit of playing the piano well. I would open the door and go, no, it's too hard. I don't want to deal with what it takes, the amount of effort it takes to get this particular sort of technical area together. And I would always close the door. Uh, but I decided to open the door wide open at age 40 and to recommit myself to practicing three, four, five hours every day. Wow. and. Uh, and develop some things that I had always wanted to develop, but had never taken the time. Uh, 
I basically try to do too many things. Uh, try to do too many things well. Write, sing, play. Uh, the, the playing, the virtuoso uh, aspect in pop music is very, it's, it's not, yeah. you know, uh, uh, the attempt at virtuosity is not what pop music has ever been about, really. Right. With, right. with rare, great exceptions, Mark Knopfler, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, of course, have been great instrumentalists, but it's not really what it's ever been about. Uh, right, right. And so, I want. It's always been a little bit about what it was about for me. I mean, two of my biggest top forty hits had a lot of soloing on them. Way it is, mm -hmm. Valley Road had a lot of bl just blowing, and I sort of felt like I sort of infiltrated and double crossed in that sense because it was a nice to hear my my music school friends say, I can't believe what you got away with on Top 40, you know. Uh, and that was fulfilling for me. That's probably the most fulfilling aspect of that to me is being able to find a place for some real playing in that pop song context. But I wanted to take it a step further. I always found myself in solo piano context being frustrated that I really couldn't bring it off the way I wanted to, so I worked on that, and that's what... Uh, there's your long-winded answer <laughs> to your question, but it's a meaningful thing. That's it's great. something that I'm passionate about. It, it, you know, it's a good interview question. It's something that it's about something that means well, something it's to it's me. A very, it's it may not mean, mean anything it. to the, the the sort of mainstream music listener who, you know, a lot of whom don't really care about that, the art, you know, or so they don't speak. care about sort of the pursuit of of excellence on your instrument, you know. All but right. that's what's really important to me. So I'm just trying. You know, I'm always blown away by new players I hear, and it's always inspiring to me. I just heard a great uh, uh, guy who's been around for a few years, but I've never heard of him, Brad Meldow, mm -hmm. who's this fantastic uh, jazz piano player. And I heard that, and it's sort of inspired me to re-recommit myself, because I've yeah. kind of fallen away from it a little bit. I'm not practicing as much now as I was the first two years there. Still doing it a lot, but not like I was. But you will. You well, yeah, it's difficult to juggle all the uh, demands, yeah. you know, when you actually have a, a career where, uh, where you're doing things like this. You know, this takes right. away from what you really want to be doing. Right. No offense there. No, I understand. <laughs> None taken. <laughs>